Now you don't have to learn the server configuration for the exam. So for the CCNA exam, don't worry about trying to learn the ISP configuration. I'm simply showing you this so that you can build your own GNS3 topology to practice, or you could do this on a real router using a back-to-back -back Ethernet cable. So on the service provider, a username has been configured. This is for the CHAP authentication. Now what is nice on a router is if I use the forward slash, I can break and search for text. So I'll search for BBA. So that's what I typed. Here's the filter, and it's showing the output of the BBA group. BBA is the broadband access group that we need to configure on the service provider. It could be used as an example to limit the number of sessions per client. So this points to a virtual template. Here's the virtual template. I've specified an MTU of 1492, same as the client. It's recommended that you do that because of the extra headers. Notice the IP address is configured on the virtual template. No IP address is configured on the gigabit interface. The interface is enabled for PPP OE using a group called ISP, which is the BBA group that we previously configured. So on the virtual template, MTU is configured and IP address is configured. We need to specify a pool of IP addresses to allocate to clients. And that's this pool of addresses. The client was getting IP addresses from this pool. So as an example, at the moment, it's got this IP address. So show IP interface brief. Notice the dialer interface has this IP address. It had other IP addresses previously from this pool of addresses. We're using PPP authentication chap call-in. In other words, when a call is initiated from the client to the server, the server will prompt the client for authentication information, but it's only doing this on receipt of a call. This once again is because of the old days with analog modems and ISDN, where you would only authenticate if you received a call. You wouldn't authenticate if you made a call. So when the client initiates the call, or in this case, the connection to the service provider, the service provider is going to request username and password from the client. Now, I've enabled NAT in this example so that the client can get onto the internet. That's only because my real DSL router in this network doesn't support routing protocols and doesn't know about the 10 network that's being used for this PPP connection. So I've done some additional configuration where I set up NAT on this connection to allow the client to get to the internet. But once again, what you need to know is this client configuration. What I've done here is create a GNS3 topology with a PPPoE client and a router acting as the DSLAM. Once that configuration has been done, the client can access the internet via my local internet connection.